Let us study different types of modulus of elasticity. For this, we can write depending on type of stress applied and the resulting strain. There are three types. Of elasticity moduli, and these elasticity moduli are separately termed. Like the first one, which is used for longitudinal stress and longitudinal strain, is Young's modulus. And mainly, it is defined for solids. So we can write for solids. It is given as. It is denoted by the letter Y, which is longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. See, for a given situation, we are given with a material rod which is fixed at one point, and it is of length L. And if we apply an external force F, and due to the application of force is elongated by a further distance delta L, in this situation we can simply write this strain to be delta L by L. And if we talk about the stress in equilibrium, if its cross-sectional area is given to us as S, then its stress can be written as F by S. So here, Young modulus of elasticity for the material of this rod we can write as F by S upon delta L by L. Even if the rod is not fixed at this point and an external force F is applied in opposite direction, then also the situation will remain same. Another type of elasticity modulus is a bulk modulus. Which is mainly defined for volume strains, or it is valid even for solids as well as for liquids. Or we can write it is used for solids and fluids, in which we consider liquids or gases also. And here we define this bulk modulus as B, which is equal to volume stress. By volume strain. In volume strain, we have studied that one on a fluid body when an external pressure is applied. So volume stress can be simply written as the excess pressure. When an excess pressure is applied on a fluid body or any body, say its volume decreases by delta V. So corresponding volume strain can be taken, and the ratio of the two can be defined as bulk modulus of elasticity. So this is delta P axis divided by volume strain is always negative because when we apply an external pressure, the volume of body always decreases. So it can always be written as delta V by V in magnitude, or we can take its sign as negative, or it can be written as minus of delta P axis divided by delta V by V. This is the way how we define. As it is a modulus, it can never be negative. It is just the magnitude of a factor which accounts for the response of a material against external forces. How elastic the material is. So this is the bulk modulus which accounts for volume strain, and Young modulus accounts for longitudinal strain. There is one more kind of modulus of elasticity, shear modulus. Let's continue it on the next sheet. The third kind of modulus of elasticity is shear modulus, and it is defined for shear strain, and it is mainly defined for solids. So we can write for solids. It is defined as the symbol used for shear modulus is the Greek letter eta, which is written as. Shear stress by shear strain, 
and uh, as uh, we already discussed for a body which is uh, rigidly fixed on ground if tangentially we apply a force f and if its surface area is s and say the body is twisted by an angle theta then in this situation uh, here shear stress is written as f by s and shear strain is theta so this is the way how we define uh, the shear modulus and uh, other than these three modulus of elasticity there is one more important term which is uh, defined as uh, compressibility of a material and uh, compressibility of material is defined as cn it is reciprocal of bulk modulus of the medium as we know bulk modulus for a given material is given as minus delta p x is divided by delta v by v where delta v is the volume decrease due to application of this excess pressure or this minus v delta p x is divided by delta v so its reciprocal is given as compressibility which is negative of delta v by v delta p x is so this also you should keep in mind because in several different numerical application compressibility of a material is asked so when our compressibility is required we just take it as a reciprocal of the bulk modulus of the material